So I'm Tartsila. I, I am doing my PhD at the University of Groningen in the North Netherlands. Uh, I'm studying ketamine. I started with ketamine for depression, which you might uh, already have heard. It. It's a promising drug, one of the biggest breakthroughs in pharmacology, in psychopharmacology, because ketamine has immediate effects uh, in taking someone out of depression, someone out of uh, suicidal thoughts, for example. Uh, so the use of ketamine uh, in the psychiatric field yeah, is promising for depression, and there's also a lot uh, in the for post, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. And, uh, but today I come to talk about ketamine for pain. Ketamine is a well-known anesthetic. It has been, yeah, it's been used for a long time already. Some people think that it's only for veterinary, but actually there is a huge use of ketamine in humans. And uh, I'm doing, I'm performing a study with the scholarship provided by the Ministry of Education of Brazil. I'm, I'm performing in the University of Groningen, more specifically in the University Medical Center, Groningen. I study with uh, patients with chronic pain. So people suffering from pain, uh, different reasons, and uh, they failed in other treatments. So uh, I'm very glad to tell you that we have a psychedelic treatment being applied all over the world. Where I work, the pain center uh, of the UMCG, uh, ketamine is one of the options that uh, the physicians offer to the, their patients. It's, it's happening. Uh, it's called the off-label use of a drug. It's, it's very common in uh, drugs for diseases like cancer, when uh, the patient is not responding for a treatment, but uh, the physician, he knows that, uh, or she knows that uh, there, uh, there is a trial with good results, so they can require compassionate use of a drug. So it's not, the drug is still not officially approved, but uh, for this purpose, for this patient, uh, they can authorize the use of the drug. We call it off-label use. So ketamine, uh, not only in Groningen, but all over the world, there, there are the ketamine clinics, where people go to take ketamine infusions to treat depression to treat, and to treat different kinds of pain. Ah, it's you. <laughs> that changed the side. <laughs> so as I was saying, uh, the off-label use of ketamine uh, and uh, in the UMC, uh, at the UMCG, our study is uh, using intravenous infusion in the course of four to five hours. Uh, it's a better, it gives better results than a bolus of ketamine. And uh, the patient stays in the hospital, it's a regular uh, hospital uh, environment. And um, also, uh, I will talk later on about the drugs that uh, go, uh, because one of the side effects of ketamine is the psychomimetic effect. So increased heart rate, anxiety, and uh, we want to reduce that. But I will talk later on about it. So it's not only ketamine, it's actually a combination of drugs, but ketamine is the protagonist. And uh, we, are, uh, we are doing a study, and that's why uh, I called it a holistic study, because uh, we want to know about the pain but also how the patient perceives pain, and we know pain is a biopsychosocial uh, phenomena. So we want to apply the pain anxiety symptoms scale, which is a scale that measures fear of pain, because sometimes the patient, he doesn't uh, show a, a increase in the damage. The damage is the same, but the, the patient starts to report more, having more pain. So it's, it's related with a lot of subject, subjective aspects of pain and how the patient deals with that. And uh, we want to screen that. And also we want to, to, t to talk about uh, the difference uh, in pain per perception before and after the ketamine infusion. That's why we apply the quantitative sensory testing, which, which is physical. We, we, we use pin prick, pressure, is more physical, so we, we are uh, combining both, so we can give a better, um, yeah, a better uh, frame of uh, pain. Not only the f if I hurt, if I if I pin pretty cute, you're gonna hurt. No, but how do, were you anxious before that? How do you feel that uh, before you come to the hospital to have the treatment? And more subject, other subject, subjective aspects. Mm. 
It's good to, to talk that uh, chronic pain uh, is very, very prevalent. 36% of the population experience a, a type of chronic pain. Is the is the major um, is the major reason for people to seek for uh, healthcare. So it's a big burden in society. So when we are talking about chronic pain, we are talking about about something big, and uh, medicine uh, is going. Uh, there's this tendency in medicine uh, to make the treatment very, very personalized. There are, uh, we call uh, pharmacogenomics, pharmacogenomics uh, uh, which studies the me metabolism of the person and which drugs are going to cause the better effects. So this individualized treatment and, uh, uh, is, is something that uh, people are talking a lot in medicine today. Um, yeah. Can you come back? Yeah, sorry. So when we talk about chronic pain, there's two kinds, uh, neuro neuro neuropathy, uh, which is caused by actual nerve damage, injury, ca can be caused by something chemical, physical, and uh, because of this nerve damage, the person uh, keeps feeling pain. This nerve is being activated continuously. Even the, the harm is already, uh, already disappeared. Because the nerve is damaged, the, the person keeps feeling pain. And uh, there is the central sensitization of the, uh, uh, the also another, uh, another type of chronic pain is more difficult to, um, to trace, to diagnose, and uh, it deals with the central nervous system. So it's that when uh, pain causing uh, the brain uh, to feel more pain. So you, the, your own pain makes you feel more pain. You are, you are, with, with time, you start to feel it um, more severely. So uh, the, we, we, we are more into the central sensitization because there's a lot about neuropathy, but the central sensitization is still uh, something that we cannot, for example, diagnose it with. There is a questionnaire about it, but it is still a little bit difficult. Next. <laughs> so this is an... Uh, I will start talking about ketamine specifically for treating pain. Uh, there is the ascending pathway of pain. It's very traditional uh, <laughs> draw about pain. There is a harm in the case of fire, the nerve, and go to the dorsal root ganglion. And the dor to the, from the dorsal root ganglion until the thalamus, the cingulate cortex, and the amygdala in the brain, it's called an ascending pathway. So this is how we perceive pain. And this is in this, in, in this trajectory is where ketamine works. Also, there, there's a substance called substance P. Actually, not ketamine, sorry, glutamate. If we talk about the, the, the normal pr procedure, is substance P and glutamate, the main uh, substances that uh, uh, transport pain signals. And ketamine will act exactly in the glutamate system. So, he, uh, he, uh, uh, ketamine is an antagonist of glutamate. We will talk about it. So, yeah, it will inhibit exactly this process of from, from, from happening. Next, please. So, the glutamate and methyl D aspartate, NMDA, I will use the abbreviation, okay? Uh, are, uh, they are widely distributed, distributed along the pain pathway and are critically involved in synaptic plasticity in chronic pain states. So we know that already. You, sorry. <laughs> and we know the paper, uh, the, the function of central sensitization, also in pain. Central sensitiz sensitization. Just a sec. There are two aspects that we, uh, we can measure uh, with uh, easy uh, exams uh, to diagnose allodynia or hyperalgesia. So allodynia is a pain re in response to a non-noxious stimulus. So a brush. If you put brush, it's usually not painful, but the, pain, the patient can report pain, having pain in the damaged area. So it's called, this is allodynia. And hyperalgesia, it's an it's a increased uh, response to a painful stimulus. So, so a pinprick can be painful, but, but this patient, those patients, they report an increased one. 
So it, it's called hyperalgesia. Those are uh, the, the how our body uh, express uh, 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 central sensitization, and this is how we try to quantify it. Yeah, we, we live uh, in the area of medicine based in evidence, right? So we need uh, the statistics, how much, uh, uh, much, how much more pain the patient is, uh, is feeling and uh, which method were, was used. So we, we develop uh, new methods to, to measure hyperalgesia and allogenia because it talks to us about the sensitization, okay? Next. So, quantitative sensor testing. Ah, this is has several, yeah. Next one. One of the, the, the tests is the pram, pressure pain threshold. This is an algometer. So, we pressure against the, the, the patient's uh, skin. And we ask the patient to tell us when uh, you start to feel pain, start, when the pressure starts to, to be uh, painful. And we note that before ketamine, after ketamine. The next one. This is an instrument ca called Von Freiherr. It's very subtle. It's not the, as, uh, 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 the pressure applied by the algometer. And uh, it, it's to detect uh, more light touch. So it's another example of uh, how we, we measure uh, the patient uh, sensitivity. Next one, please. Okay, I'm th I, I was talking about, th those are just two examples, okay? There are several others. I just wanted to explain to, for you to have a, an idea how we, we do these measurements. And um, as I told you before, it's a biocycle social effect. So it's a complex process that influences mood, cognition, emotion, social behavior and involves ma many brain regions. Uh, people started to notice that ketamine could be good for depression because of the after surgery with cat, uh, patients anest uh, who took an, uh, as anesthesia ketamine. So it was kind of an observation that, oh, that those patients are presenting better mood afterwards. It's working better. Uh, ketamine is uh, very used also in combination with opioids because it reduces the, the dose of the opioids. And we know opioids, they have a, a, a very high um, tendency to cause addiction. So the less we use, the better it is. So, and ketamine also has a potential to cause addiction, but the doses used are very low. So it's better to decrease the amount of uh, opioids and use ketamine combined. Some people, a lot of people are, are doing that already. So it's another uh, combination that ketamine can be used. Again, the glutamatergic uh, system, uh, when we talk about ketamine is the antagonist of uh, glutamate, and uh, that's how sh uh, it works for pain, and uh, this is also how it works for depression. And actually, pain and depression, they are highly associated. Pa patients living with chronic pain for years, imagine someone who cannot uh, work, who cannot move without the help because they are feeling a lot of pain for years there is a high, uh, high risk in this group to get depressed. And um, yeah, I will not, not go for the, for the subunits of the receptors, it's deep pharmacology, but uh, the, not only clinically uh, proved, but also pharmacologically, it's very well explained how ketamine works and how the side effects happen, how to reduce it. Uh, last year, next please. Next year, uh, last year, uh, there was a paper about, uh, we, know that, uh, we know that norketamine is an active metabolite of ketamine. And uh, there was a study um, showing that uh, the metabolite of our ketamine was the most effective against depression. It was a huge thing because we were thinking that S-ketamine was the best one against depression. And uh, this is uh, about the chemistry of it. A molecule <laughs> can be in different shapes. So when we say a racemate, it's called chirality. 
And uh, when, we, we have, uh, when we say ketamine, we are saying racemate ketamine. So we have R and S, 50%, 50% of, of uh, each. Uh, and then uh, they isolated the S ketamine and uh, they discovered that it has some, some studies reported having better results uh, with S ketamine. But uh, last year, th th this study saying that R nor ketamine would be the best one. But uh, this data here, uh, the Ki is the coefficient of inhibition. So uh, how much of a drug is necessary to uh, interrupt, to stop that receptor from working? And as ketamine, 0.3 is enough for uh, uh, blocking the receptor. And R-ketamine, 1.4. So it's much more. R-ketamine is much more, uh, a higher dose is necessary. That's what this data says. A higher dose of R-ketamine is necessary to do, to make the same effect of a small dose of S-ketamine. That's why it's so popular here in Europe. Uh, in the US is more the racemate. Uh, here it cat is cat Catalar is the trade name of a uh, Ketamine in the US is racemate, and here in Europe, uh, the S ketamine, ketamest, is more common. But uh, is it still, uh, is this something uh, being discussed and dis in this study and discussed? Okay. Well, this is the pump we use in our study. Uh, as I told you, uh, it's much better than um, a bolus, just an injection of ketamine is better if the patient stays. Uh, in, the, in the infusion for a, a few hours. And uh, the, uh, so the, the machine does everything. And if there is a problem, there is an alarm. <laughs> Very useful machine. Next. This is Ketanest <laughs> presenting you. This is a German and Dutch version. And uh, we apply 100 milligrams in the course of these uh, four hours, we, which is uh, more than usually in the ketamine studies, we hear 0.5 milligrams per kilogram. So we, we give a little, we, we apply a little bit more than it. Next, please. So we uh, combine with other drugs. Midazolam is a benzodiazepine, it's a tranquilizer to reduce the psychomimetic of effects of ketamine. And uh, also uh, ketamine can, can make the person a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, it, it, it can cause nausea, so next one we also apply on the centrum. So it takes out, uh, yeah, the patient, uh, the patient uh, usually sleeps during the, the infusion with these three drugs and uh, it's very interesting to see before and after the patient arrives at oh, 9 o'clock in the morning, not, uh, okay, let's do it. Some people, they, are, they go there several times because one, uh, there is this big doubt about the duration of effects of ketamine. Okay, we know it's effective, but it uh, lasts like two months for some people, three months. So the patients come back. They have to keep coming back to the hospital to have another infusion. And, uh, and, they, and they do that because it's, because it's effective. They prefer to do that and, uh, instead of living with chronic pain. So it's very, very interesting to see them high afterwards and and because we don't say that like we are talking here today but yeah as you see a lot of people crying afterwards or uh, uh, getting talkative I, i'm brazilian so there was this <laughs> this patient oh i was in Suriname. afterwards he was so talkative and he was with his underwear and just putting his pants in front of me and uh, well dutch people are not uh, that uh, you know open so he's like whoa you're a little bit high let me give you a little bit of privacy which is uh some people call the side effect some people say they are intoxicated but actually it's just part of the treatment in my in my opinion next one and I, I bring uh, the four examples. Uh, I'm doing a pilot study, which is being very, very good because, uh, for example, that questionnaire that I told you in the beginning, the pain anxiety scale uh, before and after uh, the infusion is not that a good, a good, good idea because afterwards, as I told you, the patient is, can be high or um, uh, emotional uh, or too talkative or with this tendency, every, everything is great. So uh, the answers are not that, um, accurate and uh, the questionnaire involves also uh, questions like 
I think that if pain gets too severe, it will never decrease. So it, it's something more uh, about uh, the experience of pain in life, not uh, before and after ketamine. I go immediately to bed when I, I feel severe pain. So it was a, it, 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 it's good to make the pilot study and uh, because, because uh, it really, it, it, it's giving us the perspective that this questionnaire is not uh, that good. And uh, the simple uh, visual analog scale for pain, just ask the patient from zero to 10, how much pain are you feeling now? Is, the, is, is giving us best uh, answers for our questions. So uh, there is this female, 40, 45 years old, she suffers from migraine. And uh, uh, pa her pain before was five, and after was three. So it's an interesting decrease. Are they single doses or is on, on, ongoing? They, they are diff those are different patients. They can go once for the treatment, uh, or they can, because the, the effects last, two, two, they are pain free for two months, they, they, they come back. You know, so th those is for a single case, a single visit, okay? So th those are different uh, ladies uh, in the hospital, and I, I, yeah, I'm just talking about this uh, uh, specific uh, ketamine infusion, this specific session, okay? I'm not talking about uh, the history of her treatment. Yeah, is this 100 milligram infusion that you're giving, is it weight independent? Is it no, no, it's not. Because uh, uh, usually uh, we see a lot in, in, the, uh, in, the, in papers as 0.5 milligrams sure. per kilograms, but in our protocol, is 100 milligrams, doesn't matter. For everybody. For everybody, yeah. And, and is 100 milligram infusion, is that going to give you any clinical effects, subjective yeah. effects for the patient? Or do they not feel? This is what we want to know. Like uh, if, the, if it re reduces pain, sorry, if it reduces pain uh, physically and it's subjective also, if uh, it, uh, uh, there is a reduction in the... So you feel high? Yeah, in the mood. That's what, what we want to know. That's what we are looking for because our, our tool, our questionnaire was not good enough. Mm -hmm. And so we want something to, to assess mood. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I think it will be better if we do like uh, using a ecological momentary assessment. You send a questionnaire by email, for example, and the patient, uh, the patient can answer that after one day, after two days, because really it's, it's, they are not in to answer questions after, right after the infusion. So we are changing uh, the, the, the study design because, uh, yeah, we, after the, they are very, they are very prone to answer, but the, yeah, it's not that, uh, that much, uh, the reliability is very questionable, I would say. So coming back to the patients. Uh, I, also, I would like to say about the, this uh, scale, uh, can you go to the next, please? Uh, this is the pain scale. I, I, I will talk about a, a lady who she, told, she said, I was at nine, I am now, she arrived at the hospital, said, I, I am level nine. Level nine, you are not walking, you're not talking, say, ah, oh, yes, okay, I wanna join the, the research. It's like too much, so that's why we calculate the, the delta, the variation, what the person said before and after. Because uh, this is uh, the pain scale, but we cannot tell the patient, oh, no, you're do you don't have nine now. <laughs> Otherwise, you would not be here. So, uh, so that's why we, we make the delta, uh, the variation, uh, intra-individual. Because then it says something. Can you go back, please? So here, the cases, uh, yeah, one was uh, migraine, post-herpetic neuralgia, pelvic pain, and trigeminal neuro neuro neuralgia. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, some of them, one of them, she said uh, she had zero afterwards. Uh, this, this lady who said she had nine, she was with four afterwards. It's a big, it's a big difference. So I can say, and uh, what we, the science is showing is that ketamine has side effects, manageable side effects. We can, uh, we can manage, it, manage those side effects with medication, or with reducing the, the dose maybe, because 100 milligrams is a high dose. And for a 70, uh, not, uh, uh, the, the average uh, human being has 70 kilograms, so it's 35 milligrams of ketamine. And we give 100. So uh, the, the, the depression studies is, are, are using much, much lower doses. 
I mean, the mechanism of pain in these four patients is, is, is different. It's Sorry? The mechanism of the pain. Some is neuropathic and some of it might be sort of crampy. Yeah. Pain. Oh, yeah, we, we have a different kinds. is treating a psychological overlay part, the perception of the pain centrally. And uh, uh, do you think that's how it might yeah. be Yeah. This is pain. something that uh, also connects with central sensitization. Because yeah, it, uh, the 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 fear of pain, pain itself, the nerve damage, it creates pain, of course, and it can and can make our brain perceive more pain, which is nasty, yeah, but uh, it can happen. And ketamine can help. We we have uh, good data showing that ketamine can safely help those patients. Okay, I'm finishing. Yeah, so just to finish, uh, today uh, I'm Brazilian and I would like to just uh, send my good vibes to Brazilian people, general strike, I think you know that what Brazil is passing through, for example the program uh, which pays my scholarship is over, we have a very corrupt government and uh, we are passing through this big crisis and I hope in Brazil nobody gets hurt. No, nobody gets hurt because we have one of the most violent uh, military police. So I would like uh, to finish sending the good vibes for the Brazilian people today and wishing you a very good Congress. Thank you. Thank you.